What would be the wildest thing that you did that edition? The first commercial that I got that really changed things for me on camera, it's where I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I saw the scripts and I saw that they were trying to be funny mm -hmm. and they weren't. Mm -hmm. So I didn't say anything in the script. I just started doing whatever I thought was funny. Yeah. Yeah. And? I got the I got the job. Oh, really? Uh, and I got the job they were looking for an older sort of Brian Dennehy type and I was not that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I just started saying lines that I thought were funny mm -hmm. um, and then I would sort of tag the product at the end and I got this call and they're like, what are you doing? You have to say the lines and I was like, do I? And the director said, you know, actually, I kind of liked your joke on the on this one take. Can you yeah. do that joke? But with the rest of the lines, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I ended up getting that. That's and bold. I thought that there's no way I was going to get this anyway. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. I was like bored and frustrated mm -hmm. and I didn't know where everything was going. Yeah. I, I was sort of lashing out. But once I got that uh, gig, because I didn't stick to the script. This is for commercial, not for films. Yeah. If Martin Scorsese sends you an audition, say the lines, of man. Course. He's yeah. got them better than you, yeah. right? But for, for, for this, it was because I was so frustrated and I was just mm -hmm. kind of throwing everything at the wall and seeing what would, what would yeah. happen. But after I got that part, I started doing that a lot with my commercial auditions, just mm -hmm. doing whatever I wanted. At yeah. one time, oh my gosh, this was deep in the pandemic. I can't remember what the product was for. But I thought like, okay, everyone needs to see me look different. And I'm I'm bald, right? That's and, and I've always been bald. That's this is sort of like this is how I look, right? Default for you. Yeah, exactly. It suits you. Uh, <laughs> hey, thanks. Uh, but I was like, they need to see a different look. So I gotta buy a wig. So that <laughs> but the thing was, I was too broke to get like a, a wig that looked like that looked like I had hair. Yeah. So I had this sort of like <laughs> crappy wig, and I showed up. Did to audition this thing. I had a friend who was reading with me in the audition, and and I put the wig on. He was just like, "Hey man, what are you doing? That doesn't look right, you know." And I was like, "No, this will be okay. I need to show them a different look." And he's like, "That's not." So when I realized sort of how bad it looked, I was like, "No, I'm leaning into this." Uh, so I made this whole spiel in this thing. I was supposed to come on and pitch this product, right? And it was a pretty straightforward pitch. I gave myself intro music. So you know, normally when the audition comes up, you know, like it's just like you know, you fade in and like you're there, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah, I buy the new ninety nine cent whatever, you yeah. know, like that kind of thing. But I started off screen and I started playing. I, I don't think it was the final countdown, but it was something like that. So I gave myself intro music. I made an intro, you know, I made an intro onto the frame, and then I instead of the reader reading the lines, he said, "Is that a wig?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "I'm glad you asked." And then I just then I went straight into the commercial uh, without ever answering uh, why I was wearing a wig or addressing him yeah, at all after that. Yeah. I just is that a wig? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> anyway, you should buy the new. You know, it was the weirdest thing ever because this wig looked yeah. terrible, Andre. Yeah. Right? It looked awful. Um, but apparently I made the guys uh, in the casting office crack up, of you course. know, and they're like, we're, we're calling you back for this. Can you prepare the spot this time? You know? <laughs> no wig place. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, I did bring the wig to the to the job when I got the yeah. job. And I was like, you sure you guys don't want? And they're like, yeah, we're sure, we're sure. Um, yeah, so I, I just started doing whatever it is that, that I wanted to do. Uh, or I temporarily lost my mind and for whatever reason, people bought it. Is there a line that you don't want to cross? Yes. And this, I'm not advocating people start disregarding mm -hmm. scripts. That, that's not what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. I started to play with things in a way that felt fun to mm -hmm. me. You know, uh, like, you know, trying to like, well, Brandon Potter, this obscure actor I saw on this great podcast said that yeah, I should like, yeah, yeah. like, that's not what I'm doing, right? Yeah. But what I am saying is that when people are crafting their auditions, that's the time to exercise your creativity, mm -hmm. whatever that means to you. Yeah. You know, it's important that you stay engaged and you have fun. Otherwise, it's such a demoralizing business anyway. If you're not having fun in a demoralizing business, yeah. it's brutal, right? So you've got to have fun in this demoralizing business or you can't move forward. Yeah, it's true. Uh, because, you know, people say, oh, it must be hard to only get one gig after 10 auditions. I'm like, one out of 10. That would be amazing. Yeah, no, it's one out of 100. It's one out of 1,000. All I do is hear no every day, you know? 
and that's got to be amusing to you. So that's how I made it interesting for me to do this stuff. And it ended up doing something. I think not because I made some like great comedic choice, but I think the people watching could say like, all right, he's doing something. I don't know. He, you know, he's invested. He's, he's kind of funny. He's you know? just having fun. He's making he choices. enjoys himself yeah, and the yeah. job. I mean, that's... yeah, there was one time, so I did this one show it, it, and, and this happened. So I guess I've already told you this happened in the commercials, but it happened in a narrative too. I, I the, my first, I, I, get, I think it was my first TV gig, mm. which was a show called Special on Netflix, which was a, a really fun show. And the creator was, was really fun and really funny. And he took an interest in the casting of the show. So he had this, sh he, he had the show, I was supposed to play like a physical therapist, right? And I was working with uh, the, the writer and creator of the show, a guy named Ryan. And in the audition, I did not stick to the script at all. I just said what I wanted to say and uh, I got the part. And so I was meeting the star of the show on the day and uh, he said, it, that was a terrific audition. You really made us laugh. So thanks for that, you know? And I was like, great. So we can just sort of play and like, I'll just say whatever and you can say whatever and we'll just let the cameras kind of go. And he's absolutely not. Say the words as written, you know? So I got the part by saying something else, but on the day I was not to say anything else. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think I revealed something about my comedic sensibilities in that audition and he sort of trusted that I would make. The, so the that's interesting work. because they, they kind of basically they cast you for who you are because you showed yourself proper yourself like at the audition. But they said like, but in the end, yourself but saying this. I guess what I'm trying to say is that you, as soon as you start trying to please someone else, you're you've kind of already lost the battle. Mm. You, you have to amuse like yourself in an authentic and honest way. You like genuinely amuse and engage with yourself and you know your mm. scene partner and let them figure out what the joke is. Mm. And I think those auditions were s sort of a form of that, right? Sort of showing myself fully engaged with the material in a way that I thought was yeah. it was fun, not catering to what I thought someone else mm -hmm. uh, might think of as fun. And, and I think that's probably what read um, I can't imagine that I won't do that in the future. I can't imagine that, you know, if I do uh, an audition that doesn't have anything to do with the scene or the lines, a lot of people will still push me away because of that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I of course I've lost jobs from it, uh, obviously, Yeah. you know, but I've also lost jobs for like everything. Yeah. I've lost jobs because he does a weird thing with his mouth. Or, yeah, or uh, he's too tall. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, <laughs> eyebrows are a little too pointy, you know, like whatever, dude, you lose jobs yeah. for all kinds yeah. of reasons. It might as well be for fun.